how do we handle breathing? What's the first thing you need to do? When Superman, you all know Superman? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Superman, okay? Clark Kent, okay? Metropolis, <laughs> okay? You all know, I hope you all know, please. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, okay, all right. Okay. Before he goes into battle to save somebody, what is the first thing he does? Change his clothes, right? So how does he usually change his clothes? What he'll usually do? He'll just open and reveal that S, right? He'll reveal, he'll just open and then before you know it, he's already like he'll just turn and he starts flying, correct? So what is the first thing he does? He exposes his chest, right? And shows that you know, the nice, beautiful pecs, you know, with a nice S there, you know. Now he's got he's got sexy chest. You have to admit it, okay? All right, okay. Same for a patient. When you want to handle breathing, first thing is Expose yes, pull a Superman. Okay, <laughs> expose the chest. Why? Because you need to expose the chest to see and inspect. For some people, when they do primary surgery, they forget to even expose the chest. All right. First thing is to expose the chest. Okay, cut the shirt. Okay, but there is one situation where you should not cut the shirt. What situation is that? If the patient is wearing a Liverpool T-shirt. You are not allowed to cut the t-shirt, okay? <laughs> you have to remove it, okay? You cannot cut the t-shirt. Otherwise, any other jerseys like Manchester United or Chelsea, you can cut it by all means, okay? All right? Okay, all right? Uh, you want to cut, you want to burn up to you, okay? All right, okay? Because remember, you will never walk alone, okay? All right, okay. Okay, I'm sorry, yeah? Okay, okay, now. Okay, just kidding. All right, okay. Now, you expose the chest. So what is the first thing when you do when you expose the chest? Yes, very good. You have to do your classic IPPA. Inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation. But do you do it the medical way? Inspection. Oh, there's no kyphosis, there's no scoliosis. Ah, oh, there's no Harrison salsi, there's no pectus carinatum. Ah, oh, the chest is beautifully rising on both sides. Ah, okay. Do you do it medical way? No. This is emergency. Emergency, you have to do it quick. Rapid assessment. Okay, we have no time to dance around. Okay, we have to do it urgently. So, our inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation is directed towards looking for life-threatening injuries. So, as I said, we already cleared up airway obstruction. So, what is left? Tension, Tension in your motorax. Open your motorax. Massive motorax. Flail chest and cardiac tamponade. So, after this, whatever you do, your IPPA is to detect this. Detect this next few life-threatening injuries okay so now when you inspect what are you looking for what life-threatening injury can you rule out by your inspection of course in inspection you want to do a general inspection as well what are you looking for during inspection you want to see for any wounds you want to see the chest rise whether it's equal or not is there a silent chest or not so the chest rise is equal is it symmetrical okay and then of course you want to look for any wounds okay what kind of wound you're looking for Okay, open sucking chest wound. How you differentiate between an open sucking chest wound and a normal wound, a wound that is not penetrated? How you differentiate? Yes, it's bubbling. Okay, a wound that is communicating with the pleura, okay, will have <laughs> bubbling sound, gurgling sound. Okay, you can see blood bubbling or gurgling on top of it. Okay, you can actually hear some sounds, and you can see why does that happen? Because of air, air is going in, there's also some air coming out as well, so you see some gurgling sound. So the moment you see like a kind of open sucking chest wound, what is the problem? What is the problem you have to anticipate? This could be, could lead to, this could be a open pneumothorax. Before we proceed any further, what is pneumothorax? Present of air inside the pleural cavity. Air inside the pleural cavity. Why is, when there's air in the pleural cavity, it's bad? Okay. Okay. Wait. Let's start from the beginning. Okay. Let's start from beginning between these two beautiful. As I said, all good things always happen in two. There is this beautiful relationship between the lung and the chest wall. Okay. The chest wall is like the husband. The lung is like the wife. What do I mean by that? Lung is like the wife. Whenever the lung gets upset a bit, triggered, so sensitive, will immediately collapse and run to the corner of the room. That is why lung is female. Okay? Okay? 
No. Very easy to collapse. Why you're cooking not tasty today? Collapse. Run to the corner. Okay. That is lung. Okay? Uh, okay. Chest wall is like husbands. Strong. Okay. Very muscular looking. And what's the problem? They always want to spring out. Spring out. They want to go outside. Look at other women. Okay. They always want to go out. Leave the wife and go elsewhere. So you have these two opposing forces. Chest wall always want to spring out, go cari perempuan lain. Okay. And the lung skip skip merajuk lari pergi and hide in one corner. So you have these two forces. The lung, the chest wall that's always springing out and the lungs that's always trying to collapse and run away from the husband. Okay. Now, what keeps them together? Plura. plura The plura keeps them So the plura is the wedding ring Yes The plura is the wedding ring Yes Because the plura Pulls the chest wall back Keeps the Okay Prevents the lung from collapsing And these two forces are held together by the plura Over the lung is the visceral plura Over the chest wall is the parietal plura And this plura is connected to both of them And makes sure that the chest wall doesn't spring out And the lungs doesn't collapse And this plura has a space called this intrapleural space and this intrapleural space has some amount of fluid okay and the pressure is kept negative negative 5 to negative 8 and this intrapleural space is very important because the pressure is negative so when you need to breathe okay you have expansion of a thorax okay the pressure drops air can come in because there's a negative pressure then when you breathe out okay you squeeze your thorax pressure goes up and you can exhale so inhalation and exhalation is made possible by the plura. So don't look down on plura. Plura is the wedding ring that keeps the marriage together. Now, let's go to the most interesting part. <laughs> what breaks a marriage? Third person. Third person. Suddenly a third person comes. Okay? Suddenly you see what happens when a third person comes. The chest wall wants to spring out and go to the third person. Okay? The lungs as usual. Huh? You're going out the third person. Oh no. I'll go to the corner of the room. Okay? So the floor will maraju and collapse. Okay. So who is this third person I'm talking about? Air. Blood. They are third person. Okay? As I said, evil always come in trees. That's why, one of them. You should never marry more than one. Okay? Marry more than one is going to be trouble. Remember, huh? three is trouble. Okay? Okay. Now. Okay, now. When there is presence of air or blood in the plural space the negative pressure is lost when the negative pressure is lost then what happens is that the lung and the chest wall is separated the chest will spring out the lung will collapse okay and now there is build up of pressure now no more than negative pressure it's positive pressure building up within the intrapleural space and what happens okay so when there is air there it's called pneumothorax but when does this pneumothorax becomes dangerous when the accumulation of air becomes so much or accumulation of blood becomes so much that it actually pushes the mediastinal structure mediastinal structure to the opposite side okay when it pushes to the opposite side what happens okay when it pushes to the opposite side it will start compressing on the inferior vena cava and the superior vena cava it will affect the venous return so once they, when it affects venous return then what happens your blood does not, your heart does not get enough blood. There's lack of ventricle filling, cardiac output drops. So when cardiac output drops, BP drops. Okay? So when BP drops, you get shock. So this is what we call as obstructive shock. Tension pneumothorax. That's why pneumothorax alone is not fatal. But when it develops to tension pneumothorax, when it kinks your inferior and superior vena cava, affects the venous return, blood cannot enter your heart, heart cannot pump blood out. So your cardiac output drops, MAP drops, BP drops. And when you get hypotension, you go into shock, and what kills the patient is shock. And this can rapidly happen. I've seen before. It can happen so rapidly, patient can die within minutes in front of you. Okay? So now, when you see a wound, and you see it gurgling or bubbling, then you know that this is open. There is an open sucking chest wound. Okay? And most likely, this open sucking chest wound is going to lead to an open pneumothorax. Okay? If this open pneumothorax is not treated, this open pneumothorax with the accumulation of air over time will eventually lead into tension, tension pneumothorax. So how you know when patient develops tension pneumothorax? The blood pressure will be low. 
your circulation guy will be screaming at you, Doctor, BP is low, we need to do something. Then you know that the BP is low. Of course, there's so many causes of low BP. You need to investigate. So from breathing, one of the causes of low BP is tension pneumothorax. Okay? So now, let's go one by one first. You see an open sucking chest wound, you know that this is going to lead to an open pneumothorax. So you need to address it immediately. How are you going to address an open sucking chest wound? Are you just going to take a gauze and just cover the wound and tape everything up? Good what? Hey, no need what? I cover like it. Air won't go in already what? Yes, but air can't leave. So you can't totally obstruct and cover the wound. You need to make a seal, a one-way seal. So how you make the one-way seal? Plastic lah, bang hong tu. Ada plastik situ. Okay, doesn't matter lah. I just show this. Okay. First of all, you need to choose a material that is non-adhesive. It does not stick to the skin. Okay, a non-adhesive material like a plastic should do. A plastic from myelin is okay. You buy something, just cut the myelin plastic is okay, no problem. Okay, okay. This, this plastic is a bit too big. I just assume, just stay long. Okay. So then, what you do? You cover the. Okay, you just put it over the wound and you seal it three ways. Okay, seal it here and leave one valve open so the air can flow out. The reason why we do this is the air cannot enter, but air can still leave. And there's whatever, whatever blood or secretion can always come up from the side. Okay? So, and make sure that the uh, surface does not stick to the skin. Okay? So, you create a, create a one-way valve. Okay? You can use anything. You can even use a tagadum, but do not remove the adhesive part. Okay? You can, you can use the tagadum. If you don't remove it, still it's like a plastic, right? Of course, don't remove it and make it stick. Huh? Okay? Alright. Okay. Come again. As long you cover the area adequately, okay. As long you can cover the area adequately, it's okay, right? It's not sterile. Um, you prefer it to be sterile, lah, okay. But if there's no choice, then by all means use whatever material you can get, okay. Then that is only a temporary measure for open pneumothorax. The management is still chest tube, okay. So when you see open sucking chest wound, immediately put a three-sided, no, uh, occlusive dressing, okay. Three-sided, uh, occlusive dressing, and put the chest tube. All right. Now, so what is next? Face. Okay. So what is next? Okay. So we have already settled the open pneumothorax, but remember the definitive measure is still chest tube. Okay. So open pneumothorax settled. What is next from inspection? Flail chest. You can also see a flail segment. What do you mean is a flail segment? Flail segment means when there is fracture at two segments of the rib. Okay. Two ribs or more. Okay. It's a floating segment. Okay. As I said, chest wall, the flow is a bit crazy. Okay, always trying to run away from the relationship. Okay, so the moment there is a fracture at two segments, two ribs or more, what happens is that the segment is floating and is no longer connected to the pleura. So it starts doing crazy things. When you breathe in, your chest expands, the flow goes inside. Okay, when you breathe out, okay, your chest goes in, the flow goes out. So this is called paradoxical chest movement. Okay, and why it does these crazy things because it's no longer connected to the pleura. Okay. So this paradoxical chest movement tells you that this patient could have a flail chest. What's the problem with flail chest? When you have a fracture at two segments, two ribs or more. Okay, it causes pain because it has friction against the pleura. So patient can have pain. When patient has pain, patient will start breathing very shallow breathing. And breathing shallow breathing, patient is unable to wash his CO2. Patient can eventually develop respiratory acidosis. So because of that, you need to give enough analgesia to make sure that the patient will breathe normally. Okay? Clear? Alright. Now, what's next? Um, okay. So, from inspection, you're looking for open sucking chest wound and also for flail chest. And at the same time, you also want to look the whether the chest rise is equal or not. Okay? Whether the patient's breathing effort is good or not. Okay. So then, next you move to eye settle. What is P? What are you palpating for? Trachea. You want to look at for tracheal tract. Okay? If the trachea is deviated to the 
left side, it means the pathology could be on the right. If trachea is deviated to the right, the pathology could be on the left. Okay. The next, what are you palpating for? Are you going to do? Uh, can you say one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, all day? No need, uh, not necessary. Okay. So what are you looking for in palpation? Okay. You are just doing a chest spring. Okay. Do not do a brutal chest spring. Okay. Start pressing all over and fracturing everything possible. Okay. Just use your hands. Okay. Gently go quadrant by quadrant and just gently feel. When you feel something give way, do you, come, 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 you feel, give way. Oh, come, 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 come. And before you know it, patient will have a full blown rib fracture, okay? Induced by, uh, induced by us, okay? So go fragment, uh, segment by segment, feel and see whether there's any give way, all right? A gentle chest spring, okay? Will tell you whether there's any rib fractures or not. So that is palpation. Okay, after palpation, what is next? Okay. Come again? Percussion. Percussion. Okay. So now you're going to percuss. What are you looking for when you percuss? Dullness. Dullness, hyperresonance. If it's hyperresonance, it's most likely? Pneumothorax. Pneumothorax, not tension. Tension means BP must be low. Okay? So if it's hyperresonance, it's pneumothorax. If you see that hyperresonance, BP is low. Then most likely this is tension pneumothorax. Don't get mistaken. Okay? If it's dull? Hemothorax. Okay? And then, okay, so that's why you need to do the percussion. If it's dullness or hyperresonance, will tell you whether it's hemothorax or pneumothorax. If the blood pressure is low, when the staff informs you the blood pressure is low, then you have to, with the finding of hyperresonance, it's most likely could be tension pneumothorax. If it's dull, BP is low, most likely is massive hemothorax. Okay, now, after percussion, what is next? Oscar. What are you looking for when you auscultate? Oscar. You're going to look for air entry. If the air entry is reduced, it could be? It could be pneumothorax, it could be hemothorax. Okay? If there is poor air entry. And you also look for the heart sounds. If the heart sounds are muffled. Okay. Remember, evil always comes in threes. Okay? For cardiac tamponade, there is a thing called the back striat. Okay? So you have raised JVP, hypotension, and muffled heart sounds. When you have these three, patients most likely having cardiac tamponade. Okay? Muffled heart sound. Muffled. You can't really hear it clearly. It's muffled. Okay? You are trying to talk something. Okay? Muffled. Okay? I don't know. Something like that. Okay? Okay. You can't really hear the heart sounds clearly. It's muffled. Okay? Alright? But it should come in three, right? Yes. Usually it will come with increased JVP and also uh, hypotension. I'll go a little bit detail into it later. Alright? So now, based on this, tension pneumothorax. Tension pneumothorax, what is going to be the finding? Chest rise is unequal. Okay, and then when you tracheal is deviated to the opposite side, and then hyporesonance, patient could be tachypneic, and then there is reduced air entry, blood pressure is low. So, automatically, the first thing that should enter your mind, the patient could be having tension pneumothorax. How do you treat tension pneumothorax? Yes, every even the open pneumothorax, you have temporary and you have definitive. Same back here, this is temporary and definitive. Very important temporary, what you need to do? Needle, thoracosynthesis. How do you perform a needle thoracosynthesis? Put it at the second intercostal space, okay? Second intercostal space, below the second rib or above the third rib? We always put above the third rib, not below the second rib because you may injure the neurovascular bundle there, okay? So when you put in, what are you going to use? You can use a large bone needle, okay? When you put in, you see air start gushing out. Psss. I'm not kidding you, seriously. Air will come out as psss. Okay, literally like somebody is being deflated. Okay, all right, it's nice because the moment when this deflates, you'll see that you relieve the pressure, the middle sternal structure starts shifting back, and BP will automatically go up. Okay, but it's only a temporary measure, definitive measure is still insertion of chest tube. So please do not forget when you see somebody suspected tension pneumothorax from your finding, do not wait for a chest x ray. Even if you're wrong, the needle thoracosynthesis is not going to kill him. All right. So when you suspect, just do it, all right? Do not hesitate, because when you hesitate, you're going to buy precious time, patient may die, all right? But if you, a patient that does not have tension in motorex, clinically, it looks like tension in motorex, but if you are wrong, it's okay. Even when you put a needle, if nothing happens, at least you try, and you know that there's something else that's causing the low blood pressure. You need to do a needle thoracosynthesis. Okay, then insert chest tube. What about massive hemothorax? You see the chest rise is unequal. Then when you, Trackle is deviated to the opposite side. When you percuss, is dull and 
air entry is reduced. So, staff nurse informs you, blood pressure is low. So, you are suspecting patient could have massive hematorrhex. Instead of air pushing the middle central structure, now it is blood. So, when blood pulls the, pushes the middle central structure, so now you need to relieve the pressure. So, how do you relieve the pressure? Can I put needle and drain the blood? <laughs> you can't do that. Okay. So, you need to put a chest tube and drain the blood. Okay. The amount of blood that comes out in a hemothorax will determine whether this is massive or just a simple hemothorax. Okay. So, how much blood that comes out for it to qualify as massive hemothorax? 1.5 liters. You put in 1.5 liter too big. Okay. You all learned, you all did ATLS already. You, yeah, you, you, all, you, all, you all look, you all, not proper. Okay, okay, sorry. You all seem to have quite, quite good knowledge, right? Okay. So the blood is, the blood drains. So 1.5 liter. So immediately that 1.5 liter comes out, is considered as massive hemothorax. Okay. But sometimes the blood won't come out at one go because maybe they are clogged. So the blood takes some time to come out. So we have the rule of six. What is the rule of six? One times six, two times three, three times two. Why am I going back to preschool? Very simple. Okay. Either 1.5 liter comes out immediately or it comes out in staggered fashion. How staggered are we talking about? In one hour, 600 cc comes out. That is massive hematorrhex. For every hour, 300 cc comes out. For two hours, okay? The first hour, 300 cc. The second hour, 300 cc. Okay? It's also considered massive hematorrhex. Or for three hours, every hour is 200 cc. 200 cc, 200 cc, 200 cc. That also qualifies as Massive hematorrhex. So we call it the rule of six. Either it is one times six, two times three, three times two, or 1.5 liter stats. Okay? The easy way of remembering. Okay, what is the importance when you find out that this is massive hematorrhex? Why are we so obsessed in trying to say that this is massive hematorrhex? Be because massive hematorrhex means there's some mediastinal structure that's bleeding, mediastinal vessel that is bleeding, a patient needs to go for an urgent thoracotomy. Whereas if it's not massive, you can buy some time, okay? So patient will need urgent cardiothoracic referral to open up the chest and to, uh, okay, to to do some urgent vessel repair, okay? So you need to activate the cardiothoracic very early, okay? So we have already covered airway obstruction, tension pneumothorax, open pneumothorax, massive pneumothorax, flail chest. When somebody has flail chest, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to give good energy because they are afraid of breathing because of pain. So because of that, you need to give good analgesia. Okay, I'm talking about morphine. Okay, good analgesia like morphine. Okay, uh, opioids so that they will have feel less pain and they can breathe normally. And you also want to keep monitoring that flail segment part of the lung. Sometimes, if it brush, it uh, nicks against the pleura, patient may develop pneumothorax later. Okay, or hemothorax. So you have to continuously monitor the patient. Okay, so that's flail chest adequate analgesia. Next is cardiac tamponade. So how you suspect somebody has cardiac tamponade? Back striat. And once you suspect somebody has cardiac tamponade from the back striat. You can do urgently do a echo, echo, and look at the pericardial space. If the pericardial space is distended, and you know there's a lot of fluid there, with the blood pressure is low, you know that you need to remove the blood. Why? The pericardial space, okay, is an anatomical space. Okay, I'm uh, sorry, it's a what do you call it? It's a upper space. They call it potential space. Thank you. All right. So it's a potential space, okay? So the pericardial space is usually filled with just minimal pericardial fluid. Now when there is an injury and blood fills up the pericardium, what happens? This pericardial space allows the heart to expand and to contract, expand and contract. Why this expansion is important? When the heart is expanding because of filling. When there's atrial filling to the ventricular filling, the heart expands. So when the heart expands, there is enough filling so adequate feeling so later when the heart pumps adequate blood is sent to the other parts of the body now when the heart becomes rigid it's unable to expand because this pericardial space is filled with blood okay filled with clots it is unable to expand when it's unable to expand the feeling is impaired so when there's lack of blood coming in then when you contract there is lack blood lack of blood going out cardiac output drops this is also obstructive shock not cardiogenic shock this is obstructive shock all right why you get increased JVP? Because when there's blood filling, unfortunately, not all the blood from the atrium is drained into the ventricle. So, when there's contraction, there is backflow of blood. Okay? When blood is filling, when blood's filling is unable to expand, so 
when there's contraction, there will be backflow of the the venous, the venous blood and that gives you your JVP. increase in your JVP waveform ok, alright, now so that is cardiac template so when you suspect somebody has cardiac template and you do an echo you see there is fluid there, what are you going to do now? what are you going to do now? you have to do a needle pericardial synthesis how you perform a needle pericardial synthesis? you use the pericardial synthesis set, the angio cat at the ziffy sternum, point towards the shoulder, 45 degrees start advancing in with the help of your ultrasound the moment you reach the pericardial space, start draining the blood out. How much blood are you supposed to remove? Usually, it's 50 to 80 cc, but you need to remove enough blood until the heart starts contracting properly. So, how much it takes to remove, you remove until the heart starts contracting properly and the blood pressure goes up. If the blood pressure still doesn't go up despite removing fluid from the pericardial space, despite good contractility, if the blood pressure is still not going up, then you have to rule out other causes of shock, probably hypovolemic shock and what so on. Okay? So, so, covered, eh? So, we have covered these life threatening issues. So, let's just uh, recap, okay? Inspection looking for open, open sucking chest wound. If it's present, how you know it's there? Bubbling, Bubbling gurgling sound. Immediately, what you do? Remember, primary survey is see and treat. Do not come back later and treat. You see a problem, you treat it immediately, okay? So, put a three way seal. I mean, put a one way seal, okay? Three sided, uh, what is that? Uh, occlusive dressing, create a one, one, uh, one way seal, okay? Uh, and then definitive is chest, chest tube. tube, okay? Then what else you're looking for for inspection? Equal chest rise and also for paradoxical segments, filial chest. So if there is paradoxical segment, filial chest, what are you going to do? Give adequate analgesia, make sure patient is breathing adequately, okay? That's inspection. Palpation? Tracheal tap. Look for the tracheal if it's deviated to the opposite side. What else are we going to palpate next? Also for spring. chest spring. Okay, gentle chest spring. Huh? Gentle, gentle, <laughs> gentle. Okay, all right. Now, next is percussion. percussion. You're looking whether there it is <laughs> or dull. Hyper resonance? <laughs> Pneumothorax. If BP is low, tension, tension motorax. If it's dull, <laughs> hemothorax. If BP is low, <laughs> massive hemothorax. Wow, you guys are fantastic. Thank you. All right. Okay, then you do your auscultation. Look for A and three. If it's reduced, if it's reduced, could be either pneumothorax or hemothorax. And if they and also you're looking for muffled heart sounds with the presence of hypotension and raised JVP could tell you could tell you that this is back striated. Patient could have cardiac tamponade. So immediately put the ultrasound. Look for fluid. There's presence of fluid. Do pericardial synthesis. Drain the blood and leave the angiocat there because usually we secure the angiocat so that we can remove uh, if there's any more blood collection okay that's it very simple and all this if we're doing have to be done with the whole primary survey this breathing probably like one or two minutes you have can you can do in one or two minutes can 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 yakin boleh okay okay yakin boleh